We're going to go ahead. That's the letter. We're going to go go ahead and get the House Retirement Committee underway. Um, before we get started, uh, Representative Hill, could you lead us in a in a word? Yes. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our dear, kind Heavenly Fathers, we come to you with humble hearts, thanking you, Lord, for a, another beautiful day that you've given us here. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that we have before us. Father, we pray and seek your wisdom, your leadership, and guidance. And we know, Father, if we do that, the outcome would be that suits you and what's best for our communities. Leading guide us in everything that we do. Lord, we can't do a thing without you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, so I'd like to go ahead and get started. We uh, There's a number of us that have various committee meetings, so we have uh, two bills we're going to hear today. Uh, both are going to need to go off for fiscal review, but I wanted to go ahead and have the hearing and, and get started on these uh, because these are uh, fairly new bills, I believe, to the legislature, um, or at least one of them is. So, uh, Representative Scoggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this bill is uh, House Bill 263, LC 431731. And this bill, all it does really is adjust the amount of money that a spouse could uh, draw from a probate judge's retirement fund. And it just changes that amount. That's all this bill does, simply. And we have Bob Carter here who manages the probate judge's retirement fund. And I'm gonna let him uh, get up and talk about the bill if that's okay. That, that'll be fine, go ahead. Okay. And if you could, we're, we're broadcasting online, so just make sure you state your name. Okay, sir. My name is Bob Carter. I'm secretary treasurer of the probate judge's retirement fund. If you'll see on second page, line 27, Currently, we're restricted to actuarial assumptions provided by annuity tables of 1951. That is somewhat outdated when you start calculating retirement benefits for spouses. And what we're doing here is asking the General Assembly to give the board the authority to adjust these tables as needed at the recommendation of the actuary and the auditors just to bring these up to a current mortality tables. The reason that we might get some people a little more money is because life expectancy has changed since 1951. And so the, some of the widows and some of the retired judges in the future, it won't affect anybody that's in the past, but only for those in the future. And most of the retirement systems in the state already have this authority to adjust their mortality tables as needed. That's all it does. Would it, I'll answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Any questions from the committee or, on the, or online? Courtney, you're watching who's got questions. Any questions? Obviously, this is going to be a fiscal bill that we need to go off for uh, study and so yes. forth. But I completely understand the, the, the direction you're going. Um, if I may, the chair's got a question. What would be the just uh, for a male uh, participant or maybe a different number for male versus female? What would be the the I would presume an increase in uh, expected life uh, span? And from that, someone from 1951 to 2021, we're talking 70 yeah. years. 2021, the life expectancy now is about 78 for the males. And in 1951, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but the reason this would change some, the actual equivalency has to do with the difference in the age between the retiree and the retiree spouse, if they so choose that. The closer they are to the same age, the lesser amount that reduction is. Right. If you're a 65 year old judge retiring and you got a 37 year old wife to provide that coverage, you're going to take a hit. And, and what this does is just brings up to the mortality tables and that will change those numbers as we move forward. I understand. I understand. Um, does anybody else have any more questions? I, I think Mr. Carter. Okay. Representative Buck. So what posture are we in if we wanted to go, do we go ahead now and make a motion that whenever it's appropriate for it to go to actuarial, because that's our usual method, or do we wait and have another hearing when there's more people here and do that? Or? Well, we can take action here. I, I was going to recommend to the committee that we send this off for actuarial review, um, but we, we, have, we have a quorum uh, in order to do that. 
I think we ought to. So I didn't yeah, for sure. know what we ought to do. Well, the, as 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 you see in your in your uh, information, this has already been identified as a fiscal retirement bill from the Department of Audit and Accounts. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions for Mr. Carter or Representative Scoggins? Would you like to make a motion? Sure, I'll be glad to. I move that we um, send this for an actual start study for further consideration next year. Is there Probably. a second? Yeah, I, I think that's the right, I, I, I would agree with that approach in regard to any fiscal uh, bill. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 From Representative Bentley. Thank you, Patty. Anybody opposed? Okay. So we'll we'll send this off uh, to Greg Griffin and his team. And uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions, but we'll, we'll get working on it and be, be prepared to talk about it over the summer, Martin. Okay. Thank you, it. Thank you very much. Chairman Blackman, House Bill 385. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, some of you may remember this one. Uh, House Bill 385 is, is reminiscent of last year's 337. Um, just to oh, hear me better that way. Um, to run through the bill, several years ago, our local school board came to us uh, as a local delegation. And, you know, they were having teachers that were able to obviously retire after they'd earned their requisite amount of years, uh, collect, you know, their retirement as they put in through TRS. And then they could either go back to work for the system part time, which is less than 50 percent, or uh, they could go and work in a private institution or college or, or other area. But there's certain teachers that did definitely want to retire, but they would like to retain. So they were uh, looking back and trying to figure out exactly what they could do for some of these, you know, you know, teachers that either they really needed to retain or they needed to uh, bring back if they could. And what this bill would do is allow those teachers to retire. They could come back with no future liability. So they would still have to contribute in and their employer, if it's public schools would have to re contribute back into TRS, but there would be no future liability. Um, this, we, the, the bill, um, I think was received well, but there were some guardrails that were attached to it through the process. Um, it is only, uh, applicable to the high, the three highest needs areas within a, a RISA. Um, it requires a 12 month waiting period. So you have to sit out for a year. Um, and there is a, a sunset. Uh, last year was five years, and we have moved that to four years. The other component that has been added is that there is a review and an audit component um, that, that is required. Um, I, I know Chairman Benton um, worked with us on this and, and sent it off, and it, it, it came back with a fiscal impact, and then we made these changes, and the fiscal impact went to zero. Um, did pass the house uh, last session unanimously and um, certainly appreciate the hard work of this committee helping us get to that point. But um, this is a, a essentially the, the very same bill, um, part of the governor's package um, that, that helps us fill our classrooms with, uh, with good qualified teachers in the public school system. Thank you for that. Any questions from the committee? I know we have a number of people signed up to speak on this. Any questions online, Courtney? Uh, Chairman Blackman, I appreciate you bringing this forth. And I, I just wanted to recap, if I may, just from the highlights for the committee. So someone would retire, uh, fully retire from TRS. They'd have to wait 12 months, and then they could come back into the classroom in high-skilled, high-needed areas for teaching, number one, correct? Number two, there would be no future pension liability based on that additional service, correct? And three, there would be a four-year sunset. So this, we'll have to send this as a fiscal bill. It could go into effect July 1st of 22. 
and there would be a four-year sunset so that this would go away june 30th of 26 if i stated all that correctly it it would uh yes sir mr chairman unless of course there's some precedent when it <laughs> when it's deemed to to have have no fiscal impact uh, right you know that it could could move forward earlier okay all right very good I know this is also part of the governor's initiative in regard to a teacher pipeline that he announced either a week or two weeks ago. I can't remember. Correct. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. And is it correct that the, the administration has asked you based on your knowledge of this working alongside uh, chairman Benton to uh, th this is essentially one of the governor's initiatives. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you know, I, I'd be fair to say if he's not with us, uh, Chairman Belton has has worked extensively on uh, similar legislation. Has he? Okay. All right. Any no more no questions from the committee? Obviously, this is a fiscal bill that we'll need to vote on to send to uh, actual review. We have a number of speakers signed up for this. Any, anything further, Chairman Blackman? I, I do not, not. Not unless you have any questions, Mr. Chairman. I I appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we have a few, uh, we have a number of, of speakers uh, on this uh, House Bill 385. Uh, Margaret Ciccarelli from Page. There you are. Hey, Margaret. Hello, Mr. Chair. Thank you for allowing me the um, opportunity to speak briefly. Margaret Ch Ciccarelli representing Page, about 95,000 educators across the state, um, many of whom um, teach in rural Georgia um, and many of whom are retired educators uh, who are interested in this legislation. We stand in support of it today and appreciate the governor's focus on um, enhancing Georgia's teacher pipeline. We do have a teacher shortage in Georgia, but it is not the same in every community or in every subject. So this allows local communities with the help of their regional education service uh, agency, the RESA, to determine what the area of highest need is in that regional area um, and um, allow return to work as one tool in the toolbox to address um, the teacher shortage. So we appreciate the legislation and um, also look forward to it being sent to actuary. I will add also that we get a lot of questions about this and you as individuals on the committee may receive that as well. So we're trying to be very clear to educators, um, particularly those who are retired who might be interested uh, in participating in this, um, considering staffing shortages that are unique to the pandemic that this would not become effective. It doesn't have the possibility of becoming effective until 2022. So we just need to be very clear with the public that this is not something that could be effective now. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions for Margaret? Online? All right, thank you very much. Um, Rob, I'm sorry, I can't read the handwriting. G R E A. Rob Shather. Rob Chatham. Chatham. Okay. Sorry about the handwriting. Yeah, that's no, sorry. Right. I'm left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. Go ahead, sir. I'm Rod Chatham, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Chair uh, Carson, thank you for uh, listening to the Retired Educators Association. The Georgia Retired Educators Association is uh, 32,000 plus members now. We have 145 chapters locally, and you probably know some of these folks in the chapters. You're probably working with them in your communities. Um, I stand uh, to speak for them, speak for the organization to say that we certainly support this bill, House Bill 385. And uh, for many of the same uh, reasons that Margaret mentioned, uh, we think it's a good idea for enhancing the Georgia pipeline. For teachers and uh, if you ever need anything from us give us a ring our office home office is flowery branch and you can always check with your local chapter thank you any questions for mr chatham if i may mr chatham yes, I, I i would appreciate it i can ask a question is there any particular area of the state where this uh, this bill has the most interest is it most popular in the rural areas, particularly our, our our friends in the southwest part of the state, that's been so hard hit with with storms. Is it is it very very popular in the North Georgia area, uh, where you have um, 
or, or maybe the Southeast area of the, of the state. Is, is there are any particular areas uh, that you have in mind from your membership that are very, very interested in this? We're hearing uh, interest all over. And in fact, uh, Dr. Bill Sloan, our executive director, just sent out a survey for everybody to uh, informal survey to, to fill out. I'll try to get some information for you and get it to you. How long uh, uh, would you have those results before the end of session? I mean, this is going to have to go off for fiscal review anyways. Yes, sir. But... Yes, sir. I can, no, I can't get it by, uh, uh, I can get it in a few days, get it to you. Yeah, very good. You would, would that be something in the format that I could share with the committee and, and Chairman Blackman? I'll have well? to check with uh, Dr. Sloan and see see what uh, what's the, the, uh, the situation with the uh, survey. He just sent it out a few days ago. I understand. All right. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Karen Solom from GAE. We spoke just a moment ago in my office. How are you? Doing well. I'm sorry. Could you say your your last name? I, I remember your first name, of course, because we just met. But could you say your last name one more I time? I can. I'm I'm Karen Solheim. Solheim, guy. Means it. sunny home in Norwegian. <laughs> okay. Go I'm ahead, ma'am. A member of the GAE Retired Educators. I'm on the executive committee there and also on the GAE Board of Directors. And in discussions that have been had concerning this proposed bill, we feel both active members and retired members that this is a win-win all around. I was on a Zoom call last night with both educators in the trenches and retired educators and COVID has hit everyone hard. Teacher shortages are real. Having retired educators in critical needs areas give, being given the option of returning to the classroom full time after 12 months while still receiving their TRS pension is a win. But it's especially a win for our students because as we know, retired educators bring experience and our students would benefit from that experience and by from having a certified retired educator in the classroom. Also, as mentioned, allowing local communities to decide what their critical needs areas is also a win. We are in support of House Bill 385. Thank you. Any questions for Karen or GAE? Okay, thank you, Karen. And we have one more speaker, uh, Scott Bierman. I think I can read that handwriting. Scott Bierman with Georgia School Boards Association. Are you right-handed? I am right-handed. Okay, that must be why. Well, my handwriting is terrible, so hats there off to you. you I'll, I'll give Rod a hard time later. Go ahead. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Scott Bierman with the Georgia School Boards Association. I just want to be uh, brief and just say we, we support this legislation. We really want to thank uh, Chairman Blackman for the work he's done in the last few years uh, working on this issue. Um, it's something that's important to our membership, uh, both in rural and urban areas, uh, in getting teachers back into the classroom and higher needs. We also want to thank the governor's office. I know Miranda's here with the governor's office. We want to appreciate him and his office for um, all that he's done on pushing this forward as part of his teacher's package and uh, look forward to seeing this move over the next year or so. Any questions for Mr. Bierman? I think it's a uh... I, I think our retired educators are, are speaking loud and clear. Any any questions from online from Mr. Bierman? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. So with that, this is obviously a, a very important initiative. Uh, I was wondering anything further from the committee before we take action to possibly move this to actual review? Is there a motion? Move to study. Thank you for that. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Aye, aye from Patty Bentley. <laughs> Can we say those are unanimous? Okay, very good. All right, good deal. Thank you, Chairman Blackman. Thank you very much. Um, 
Chairman Benton, uh, we, we didn't talk about doing a hearing, but do, can you just, uh, did you want to mention House Bill 173 and your other bill to us uh, uh, just very quickly? Uh, 13, all right. If, if I could, well, I thought you could just mention it and we'll, we'll obviously take a vote to send it to actual review with the Department of Audits and Accounts and their consultants. But I, I just thought for the benefit of the committee, you wanted to mention uh, what's, uh, what's on that one that's on its way over there. Are we good? Yes. Uh, the first one is House Bill 191. Uh, this is a, a bill that affects legislative retirement system. Uh, right now, uh, legislators are, uh, in order to be vested in the retirement system, you have to uh, uh, be in for eight years. Uh, that doesn't change. What does change is the amount that is that will be paid uh, times the number of years served as your monthly retirement. Uh, we are asking that that be raised to $50 a month times the number of years served. Um, the, uh, the retirement system is uh, very well funded. In fact, uh, uh, last year it was funded at, at uh, over 125%. And so it is, uh, it has the, the funds to establish this, but in order to make sure that those funds stay there. We're raising the uh, required um, uh, participation amount up to nine and a half percent. So that would that would take care of that. And then uh, the second bill is uh, House Bill 173, and that has to do with retirement systems. This eligible large re uh, retirement plans. Uh, this would be plans that are worth over a certain amount of money. Uh, it does exclude teacher retirement uh, since we raised them to 5% last year. Uh, we decided that, that was that was enough. Uh, but all other eligible retirement systems that are not at 10% of alternative investment may go to 10% alternative investment. I uh, want to remind the committee that this is this is this is only a guideline. They don't have to go to 10%. Uh, it depends on what their uh, advisors want to do as, as far as the money is concerned. But uh, we saw a good example of a uh, firefighters pension fund that had gone to 10% uh, several years ago and their returns are about 16% right now. So uh, it's uh, it's well worth looking into. And so those are the two bills that I've, I've got that will, that uh, are, are said to be actuarial bills. Thank you for that, uh, Chairman Benton. On uh, 173, that would, to your point, exclude exclude TRS, but it would allow um, it would allow the essentially ERS to go to ten percent. Uh, those, do you want to cover those alternative investment types? We're basically talking about private equity, are we not? Uh, I think that would depend on what the investments want to uh, want to do, but uh, I, I don't know what uh, I don't know what the firefighters fund is is invested in. But it could be real estate. It could be a lot of different other other different things. I think. Sure. Sure. So. Sure. Okay. All right. Representative Buckner. Uh, question. I was thinking that real estate was the only thing that was exempt. I thought we did not allow that as an alternative investment. Is of the firefighters? Do you know or anybody know? Anyway. I don't know what they're investing in. Um, I just they, was thinking they, there was a lot of conversation. That was the one exemption. They um, they invest in a lot of startup companies, right. uh, that type of thing. But they are investing in things that that apparently their uh, yeah, well. their advisors think that they can make money in. I, I just. I'd like to know that, but we can get to that later. <laughs> that will come out in actuarial here. Right. You'd like to see a track record of success at the, yeah, I, I, I hear you. Okay. All right. Is there anything more? No, thank you. All right. 
Representative Evans, good to see you again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you as well. I had a question uh, about House Bill 191. I was trying to look at it online, so it may be in here, but the old amount of the monthly payment, there was no danger of anybody getting more than they currently get as a sitting legislator. But I think with the new math, there's some members that have been here or could be here a long enough period of time where they would actually make more in retirement than they do now. And I was just. Well, no, my question was under the bill, I think a, a, a retired member could make more than a sitting member in retirement. I'm wondering if that was the intention of the bill. Well, we've got some members that have been here for quite a long time. I don't know that I understand fully your question. If I may, is, I'm sorry, I didn't turn your mic on. If I may, I, I think what Representative Evans is, is saying is that if we go from $28 per month times the number of years of service to $50 per month times a year of service, we have some members of the General Assembly uh, who would be, I would. I don't know if I call it a windfall, but I, I would I would say that under this legislation, I think what Representative Evans is saying, they would see a very uh, significant increase in their monthly benefit. Mm -hmm. I think Maybe that's what they're- cap it up to what you made as a member. Okay. Did well, I, I think you could see it on any retirement system. You've got people that, that have retired from other, and, and other retirement systems that are making more than, than people that are actually doing the job now. Uh, but the, actually the, the amount of money is, is over $30 now. I think it's $34 is, is what we receive. But uh, that, this, this was a, uh, looked at, this makes the third uh, cycle, legislative cycle that we've been through to try to raise this up to $50. Uh, so that means if, if you stayed for eight years that, you would receive four hundred dollars a month, and and uh, that that would be your retirement. Thank you. Yeah, more than anything, just wanted to make sure we were deliberately thinking about what the math adds up to, and if it's the pleasure of the committee, it is. It's just it it is a big difference. Well, the the this only this is only for the legislators. It it's not including uh, the title of the speaker or uh, the. Uh, and, and and the increase in salary for him, it, it's his his is not in this bill. The speaker's retirement is not considered in this legislation. That's what. That's I'm right. Saying. It was yeah. it was it was for the two previous, but it's been removed for the for this one. Okay. And that includes the retired speakers at uh, Speaker Coleman and and uh, uh, Speaker Richardson. Right. Well. Right. Representative Evans, did you have anything further? Okay. All right. In regard to, uh, since we just finished talking about House Bill, uh, I'm sorry, we have one more question or one more comment. Uh, Jim Potvin from ERS, are you on? I am. Can you hear me? Hey, Jim. How are you doing? I'm well, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, just a couple of things about the uh, LRS discussion that you guys were just having. Um, it is currently $36 per month per years of service. That's the current number. And so that would be raised from 36 to 50 under the bill you were discussing. Um, you might be interested to know that that number, the $36 number, hasn't been changed since about 2004. Uh, so it has been a long time since the legislative retirement system uh, was adjusted. And regarding the question of current legislator pay, I believe there was a uh, significant discussion last year and the prior year about changing that number as well. So I don't know if I'd draw too strong of a link between active and retired legislator pay for purposes of this discussion. Any questions for uh, Jim Potvin on regard to that? Jim, appreciate that input. Thank you. You're welcome. Obviously, this is a fiscal bill, and I, I think just to to Chairman Benton's point, we've this is 
third cycle, I believe we, we've had this. So um, we'll obviously need to get a, a actual review on this. Is, do I hear a motion on that? I make a motion. It's something that the house has, has looked at. Both of these bills were, were looked at last year uh, to, and, and the, uh, the, the retirement pension fund on alternative investment passed the house, but, but got stopped in the Senate. I understand. Oh. Uh, Courtney just pointed out that we don't have the bills in front of us, so but we'll we'll meet next week and for sure send it to actual review at that time. But I, I just wanted you to give you an opportunity to, to talk about those two. Okay, anything else uh, before the committee? We've we've sent two bills to for actual review, um, and we have two more bills to formally send to actual review. We might have a, a third bill. Uh, at our meeting uh, this coming uh, or a week from today on Tuesday at two o'clock. Any other business before the committee? Well, thank you very much, everyone. Any any questions from on Zoom? I, I don't want to. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned. <laughs>